you have to move to New York. It's just an audition. I probably won't even get the job. There'll be tons of dancers auditioning. You get it. You're amazing. Do you need something from New York? Of course. Do you love me? More than anything. Why is it not special? She doesn't know me. Because I'm not a boss. Sega. Of course. It's good to see you, Segev. What are you doing here? Someone killed my wife. I need to find some answers. No. It seemed her death was an accident at first. But now he thinks there's more to the story. It's time we start investigating your wife. They're coming after me and after my family. This is bigger than you. She's really ruined your life. I hope she was worth it. When are we coming back? I can't go home yet. Somebody tells me you should. For everybody's sake. Welcome everyone to this 92 Y virtual talk. My name is Jessica Shaw and I watch TV for a living. So I am all too familiar with getting hooked on a series and clicking next episode a few more times than you ever plan to, which is exactly what I did with Hit and Run, a mystery action suspenseful thriller now streaming on Netflix about an Israeli tour guide, Segev Azulai, whose American dancer wife, Danielle, is killed in what appears to be a simple hit and run accident, but of course isn't anything close to that. The series spans continents from Israel to America, so it's only appropriate that we continue that. I would like to welcome from Israel creators and executive producer, executive producers Lior Raz, who also stars, and Avi Isaharov. And from America, creators and executive producers Don Prestwich and Nicole Yorkin. Uh, a word of warning to all four of you. I would like to quote one of my favorite lines from the series. Killing an American spy in Israel is nothing compared to messing with an American journalist in her <laughs> own country. <laughs> so answer wisely. Welcome to all of you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Lior and Avi, I want to start with you because so many people know you and your work from Fauda, which became an instant global phenomenon. So tell me about coming up with this idea. And did you feel a pressure to make something feel very different than what people knew you for? Avi, is that Karov? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yes, Mr. Raz. Um, <laughs> So first of all, you know, one of the challenges for us, at least when we came up with the idea for Netflix was to how to make a show that would be different from Fauda. You know, we were known only for Fauda because we were kind of beginners. I mean, comparing to the ladies, of course, we are true beginners in this uh, whole industry. So we wanted to create, to bring something that has a, a different flair, a different look. And that was a challenge because, you know, the, the main character was the main character. It's Leo Raz uh, and he's the lead. And we wanted to create something more international that would appeal for more audience and, you know, something in between Israel, Tel Aviv, and the U.S., New York, something in between those two cities that it's so different at the end of the day. And that's what hooked us up with the ladies. And I think that, you know, the cultural meeting point between us and the ladies was also affecting the script. At the end of the day, I think that the so-called clash of civilizations, this is the thing that we brought to our show. And just one last sentence, Jessica, I'd like to warn you that you're dealing with at least two journalists on this panel. I mean, Nicole Yorkin and myself, an Israeli journalist. Yeah. Um, yeah. Avi, that was one of my questions. So thank you for scooping me to put it in, <laughs> in our journalistic terms. Um, Lior, was there a moment where you thought, oh, my God, what if we built this show around 
a hit and run and it was not necessarily what it appeared to be? No. <laughs> First of all, I want, I want to talk to say something about what Avi said. Um, we wrote the show and we didn't, we thought that I won't be the lead actor. We thought we actually had in our mind someone else that we presented to Netflix. And uh, so it wasn't, just Leora's found and hit and run, how we can make a difference. Uh, so when we wrote it, we wrote it for someone else. Uh, at the end of the day, it happens to be, to be me. I'm so glad that, that it happened because it's, it's a great show and it's a great opportunity to, uh, to be, to act in this, uh, to take this ama amazing role and to, and to, to dive in it. Um, so listen, this, this, this thing about this, car accident that takes you it's it's a real challenge you know because you're killing the lead actress after 10 minutes of the show what wh where you where you can go from there and um and i think the way that we portrayed the flashbacks in a way that it's kind of a seamless way it's not just uh i'm I'm showing you the show, the current days, but let's go to the past, the current days, let's go to the past. Everything is going uh, back and forth, but in a very seamless way that uh, I think that it works because all of us, the four of us, don't like flashbacks. So, but we used it in a different way. Mm -hmm. uh Don and, and Nicole, um, you two are such successful producers and writers working on The Killing and Chicago Hope and a bazillion other shows. Um, what was it? Tell me about teaming up with these two and, and what was the story that that you both wanted to tell? Well, um, we had been Fauda fans, of course, and I believe we had heard that um, these guys were coming to town and looking for American partners. And we just had this feeling, a sense that if we you know that when we met these guys, we would hit it off. And I think it was the fact that Don and I have been partners and Avi and Leo have been partners and Don, uh, well, Avi and I are former journalists and Leo and Don like to sit on the couch while the rest of the, while the other two are typing. There was this, this sort of, Blending and, and sure enough, we had one meeting and we just completely hit it off. And I think we all knew after that meeting that this would become our show and that we'd be able to do it together, which we did. Don, tell me about that first meeting. Was it in person? Was it over uh, Zoom, our much maligned uh, now mode of communication? No, it was it was absolutely in person. And um, that's because you know, it was three years ago, right? Yeah, it was three years ago. So <laughs> it was in the before we time. Know, we did not know that word Zoom. <laughs> OK, yeah. it did not exist. <laughs> so, yeah, we 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 met with these guys and I really had no idea what to expect. Um, and we were we I think all four of us were struck that that four very different people had so much in common. You know, we really, I think it's because being a team create, I mean, a certain kind of person can be a team and be in a team, I think. And I think we all recognize that. It's like, this is a, these are four people who understand what it is to collaborate, who value collaboration and understand that it makes things better. So, and they are, you know, it just felt right. So, you know, the rest we just walked out of that meeting feeling like, um, you know, this this is a this is a marriage made in heaven, <laughs> made in Beverly well, Hills. Yeah, it was heaven or Beverly Hills. in Beverly Hills. <laughs> yes, <laughs> on, at noon time. Yeah. But then yeah. soon enough, soon enough, we managed to bring the ladies to visit Tel Aviv, and they spent some time with us here in Tel Aviv. Yep. And for Don, it was the first time. Nicole, it was your first time, right? No, it was my first time. Oh, so yeah. for both of them, it was the first time. It was kind of a very good experience, if I may say that. Uh, yeah. Correct me if I'm wrong. Or I'm not wrong. I never, I'm never wrong. So yeah, never wrong. <laughs> <laughs> never wrong. <laughs> never wrong. Yeah. <laughs> so it was great just spending time with them in Tel Aviv and take them all over, and you know, developing everything. And then I think that you know when we came to Netflix with the pilot and the Bible with, you know, finishing the development, they saw the chemistry. 
they saw that there's something very special about the, the uniqueness of the connection and the way that we, you complete me or something like that, you know. So it, it was really great to work with those ladies. Uh, Don and Nicole, how do Avi and Lior, uh, how are they as tour guides of Tel Aviv? Well, you know, it's always exciting because everybody in the entire country knows Lior. So wherever we go with Lior, people know him, even if they don't personally know him because of, you know, of course, Fauda is just a cultural touchstone there. But um, they took us to such interesting places. You know, Avi gave us incredible history of the country and, um, you know, of the many aspects of the country. So that was really fun. And of course, they know good restaurants. So we ate well the whole time. Yeah. Yeah. Just you were drunk it. most of the time. Yeah, well, don't yeah, tell it, yeah, you know, I had to tell her. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, we're going there. We're going there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Avi and Nicole, you both mentioned you, you're both former journalists. And, and this show, though, about this hit and run and this this kind of unraveling of of this mystery and connections and allegiances and and betrayals. There's so much geopolitical stuff going on. Did you find it exciting to tap into your former journalist selves and really dig into the just the politics of of what could theoretically be going on between these two countries well i will just say that avi is still a journalist and so he i i have gotten out of the trade but but he actually still is a journalist so you know that was incredibly helpful because we always wanted to be realistic you know um and we wanted to we wanted the show to feel real. And I think we did a pretty good job considering it was written quite a while, you know, maybe two years ago, but it seems very prescient when you, you know, when, once you get to the bottom of the mystery and you find out what's really going on, I think we did a pretty good job of, you know, <laughs> being very topical. Jessica, For sure. I think, that, I think that what we loved so much is about the, the, the structure that we did this uh, show, meaning that you have the couple, you have the Israeli man and the American wife. But at the same time, you understand that this is way, way more than just uh, the relations between a husband and a wife. There's, there are the upper levels, meaning you have the relations between two states and how do they affect the personal lives of a couple, just a married couple that she came to Tel Aviv to spend some time. But then the question of trust comes of, you know, how can you trust, can you trust your wife, can you trust your husband? Can you trust your best or greatest ally in the Middle East? Or maybe you should be more careful about the, the information that you give her. So that was a kind of what we tried to do to take the personal and to show how does it affect the more national diplomatic levels. I think the, the, um, oh, go ahead. Now I was just gonna say, I think having two um, uh, journalists in, I mean, I'm sure Lior agrees completely. Having a journalist partner and then having two journalists in the writer's room, the priority, it was always like, you know, could this happen? Is this realistic? And, and we would really all have a problem. It's like, it, it's a, sh and we would just, for Israeli stuff, we would turn to, you know, Avi and Lior and say, could this really happen? Would this really be this way? And, you know, they would usually say yes, or, you know, or it has happened. <laughs> That's what they would say. They would give us instances. So, so, and, and we would, we would do the same thing because, you know, I think for years being partners with, with journalists, that's just the way it is as writers. We, we have to, it has to be realistic. It has, has to be based in something real. We couldn't do a big pretend show. And when, when Avi is, I mean, when Avi, when <laughs> Sega is in, in New York and, and, you know, he does things that are considered bad things. There are consequences. It's not like he can just get away with anything. There are consequences. So, you know, that was sort of our goal. We would dig ourselves into a big hole sometimes, though. It would be very challenging. So. 
I mean, tell me about John. You just mentioned this the the, the writers' room, and I, I think about the differences in the TV and film industries in in both of these countries. Certainly, you know, incredibly uh, significant and successful in, in Israel, but a much more intimate group, I'm guessing, than the the kind of gargantuan industry that's going on in America. And I I was curious how the four of you blended different styles. I mean, I, you know, from, I, I don't know, just how you, how you blended this to come up with this one unifying vision. So first of all, we, there is a cultural difference between us and we are, you know, in Hebrew, you say dugri. Dugri is you say everything in the face. Yeah. We are, we are saying everything. We're doing We are not politically correct, you know, and it's not that we are rude, but we just want, we're just saying the truth. We're saying what we think. We don't have any boundaries like <laughs> the Americans uh, have in, in, very po- in a very polite way. And for example, um, when uh, Nicole will say, tell me, uh, Lior, I hear you. Probably it will be, man, it's a bad idea. I will not, I will never hear you about it. Just get, get out of here. It's not, it's not a good idea. <laughs> and if she will say, uh, um, I say like, uh, it's very interesting, Lior. So it's not interesting. You just get, get the hell out of here. It's not, it's not interesting. So we had, and also I remember one day I came to the writer's room in a very humoristic way. And I said, listen to, to all the writers, you know, at the end of the day, we're going to translate it to Hebrew. And I don't mind, you know, I will translate it the way I want to write it. So, you know, just you do what you want and I will do what I want. And I thought it was a funny uh, um, joke. Day after that, I got a call, I think, from Don and he called and they said, listen, yo, you cannot say that. The WGA, you got everything going to be, you know, they're going to get crazy. You cannot do that. I said, it was just a joke, man. It's just a joke. But in the end of the day, the collaboration, and we learned so much because we are very... As you said, we are a very tiny force who's working together. And now we had this op- opportunity to work in a way that this is how you should write a show. You have seven writers, you have someone that's running the, the room, uh, that he's the showrunner, our two amazing partners. And we learned a lot from that. Also in production, you know, in Fauda, if I tell you how much money it costs to, to, to shoot Fauda, you can shoot like 10, 10 Faudas in, 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 one, in, 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 in one show of Hit and Run. <laughs> and the production, because we don't, have, we don't have so much money in our productions in Israel, so it's, it's kind of a, it's a small unit, very fam- family kind of style, in a good way, in a bad way. In a good, in a bad way that the woman can tell you that you gain fat just a second before you go into the scene. Yeah. <laughs> or the, the, the makeup artist can tell you, you should ask the director to, to change the word because it's not, it didn't work, didn't work. You're not good enough to be seen. And, but in the other way, when everybody has to work together, like we have a magic hour and you have to shoot one shot and everybody has to bring, I don't know, stones together. So the makeup artist, the, the boom and, and the drivers, everyone bringing the stones all together in order to make it happen. And I think one of the amazing things that happened in the US when we came to shoot in, 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 in New York, for me, I wanted, I wanted to feel in a family, you know, even though it's like huge and it's in New York. So me and uh, Gal Torren, who's playing Ron, day before we started to shoot, we in- invited to my, my apartment all the chiefs and all the crew of Hit and Run in New York. And we cooked an Israeli meal for everyone. And they were in shock that we didn't order like a, a catering. But yeah. it was me and him with an ap- apron. And, 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 <laughs> exactly. And it was so much fun. And this was the beginning of working as a family and not working as, uh, as unions. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I feel like there's like a Netflix cooking spinoff show to be had, like yeah. cooking yeah. with Lior uh, that, that you guys. Guys are good cooks too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there yeah, absolutely, and absolutely and is. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, it's interesting to me to hear about like that, the kind of the culture class. I'm, I'm Don and Nicole, what, what was that like 
from your end, like I hear what Lior is saying, where you're like, okay, guys, like you got to be more like strategic and political with this. <laughs> yeah, we. I mean, we would. It, it, it was interesting because right away we learned. Not right away. Actually, it took us. We had that to bash into wild. that wall. It took us a while. We had to bash into that wall a few times of trying to quote manage them in in the sense of saying things a nice way so that they would get the message, you know, they get the message. But see, the thing is that they're speaking, it's already hard enough, you know, to to understand all of this English that's coming at them anyway. It's not their first language. But then to understand the subtle message beneath the English was, it's asking a lot. And, and they just, they just wanted to know, is this, you know, what, what do you want? What are you saying? What are you thinking? And we finally, finally learned it. And it, it's actually helped us, I think, in um, other, other uh, professional encounters we've had is just to try to learn to be more direct so that everybody knows where you stand. I think it's, it's actually very valuable. And I think Avi and Lior kind of, like he said, <laughs> needed to learn sometimes you know, the, the sensitivities, he, they didn't understand always the sensitivities of the Americans and the sensitivities in their room and, and the issues. And, you know, sometimes they would complain that we were too politically correct. And, and, you know, it would be like, no, we're not, <laughs> we're not too, we can't be politically correct enough. And so, so it was, it was, it was challenging for, for everybody to learn everybody's culture, but it was also, I mean, it, it grew us all. It was a great experience. It's a, it was a wonderful experience. Uh, yeah, Leora, I just want to go ahead, Avi. Then there's the language issue, of course, which was a real challenge and it was fascinating. And to play in between the languages, between Hebrew and English, what happens to a guy that, you know, basically speaks mostly Hebrew, but then he comes to New York and starts to speak in English and his friend that is an Israeli originally, like one, of course, but he spent so many years in New York. So now he's speaking half American, half Hebrew or right. Americish, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> so it, it was kind of funny to play in between. I must say that, we you know, we had the edge because Leo and I, we both speaking, thank God, both languages, English and, and Hebrew. And those two ladies cannot understand Hebrew. So we changed the script completely. <laughs> and... <laughs> We, we understand put, it a lot better now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we even put, right. By the way, Don knows a few words in Hebrew. Yeah. yeah. Bar mitzvah, shalom, mazal yeah. tov. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and we, we put in between the, the lines of the third episode or the fourth episode, uh, if you turn it vice versa, so you can hear John Lennon is alive in Hebrew. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right, exactly. Well, I mean, I am curious about, you know, Avi and Lior, here you are uh, um, writing and acting and, and creating this world not in your first language. And though obviously you're both fluent and everything, was that was that something that you were nervous about or did that feel like a challenge of like, oh, I want to see if we can do this? It's a first of all. Yeah, it, it, we love challenges, Avi and I, you know, we are, we, our life were built from challenges. We are, yeah. And we, uh, yeah, and I think, <laughs> kind, yeah. And, you know, we are, we, 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 we made a show that half of it in Arabic and half of it in Hebrew as well. It was hard, very hard. And Avi's Arabic and my Arabic, we have, I think my English is better than my Arabic. In the, in the end of the day. But Avi is fluent in Arabic and fluent in English. So we all, we're talking many languages. And I think for, for me as an actor, I was very nervous to act a lot because everything was on my, you know, my shoulders. In the end of the day, I had to deliver it. The performance have to be, had to be very, very good. And people should, had to understand what I'm saying and, 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 and actually get related to what I'm saying. And to, so it's not easy. Just imagine, you know, just to, to to act in Hebrew or in, in German, it's hard. It's, it's not easy. And uh, I was nervous in the beginning, but as we were shooting more days and more days, I felt more relaxed and I saw that it's, 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 it's okay and it's working, it's working well. One of the relationships uh, in the show that becomes very significant once the action moves 
to New York City is that of Segev and, and Naomi, played by Sana Lathan, and they have this past um, and they each have their own reasons to be working on figuring out what actually happened. Um, but tell me about casting Sana and and what you were hoping for with, with that character. Yeah. Nicole, you have a phone call. You want to answer? Sorry, no, you know what? It's somebody FaceTiming me, so I apologize. It's, <laughs> it's you know. bad timing. Uh, it's bad timing. Okay, Nicole, yes. Nicole. It's me. I just want to interrupt you. <laughs> you just want to say hello. <laughs> um, you know, we didn't, Nicole and I um, specifically didn't know. I'm not, actually, I don't think Avi and Lior knew um, um, Sana's work that well before we were talking about casting the part of Naomi. And as we got to know her, it was just a, I mean, it was a slam dunk. We knew, well, yeah, you know, she has to be Naomi. And she um, she actually she was better than we thought she would be. She elevated the material. Um, she was a complete professional, uh, a trooper. You know, I, the interesting thing about um, Lior and these Israeli actors is that they 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 don't tend to spend all their time in a trailer. You know, they come out and they're on the set and they're waiting and they're watching and they're engaged with everybody. And it's a real oh, of course effort. because there are there are no trailers in Israel. There are no trailers. <laughs> 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 but but um, but Sana was the same way. Sana, I will. I think we spent hours sitting. You know, at Video Village, just hanging with with Sana. You know, before she would go and, and do her scenes, and and that was really. I, I'm sure only people who've done uh, American television know this. That was super unusual. We didn't know who was having to get anyone out of their trailer or anything. They were there, ready to go. I also think, um, you know, Sana's a very intelligent woman, obviously, and she really wanted to know what her character was about. And it was very important to her that that, um, Naomi actually was a serious journalist, which, you know, we think she is. That's the character we've created who has a stumbling block, which is that she's trying to get out of this niche her editors have put her in, which is doing like political profiles. And, you know, there's a certain sense that once she figures out what's happening with Segev, that maybe this might be her ticket to also writing this great investigative piece that she's perhaps been looking for. So, so, so now I was really interested in all that and also interested in the fact that we told her that you're also black and Jewish, the character. And so she was able to talk to some people in the, that community. There's actually a community and find out what that's all about. And I think hopefully that adds another extra interesting layer to who Naomi is. I think that what we did is also, we went on the kind of, there's some kind of a flirt there between uh, Naomi and Segev. I mean, yeah. you sure. feel that there's some kind of tension at the end, there's some kind of a kiss also. And it took us back to the question of how come, like, okay, they, they were together like 30 years before or 20 years before. Now suddenly they meet and there's a, and we taught the, the writer's room and the ladies something that it's a term from Hebrew. It's called the mythological X, meaning that each and every one of us has his own X, this very special X in his life. And, how do you, you know, say it in he, Hebrew? X the mythology. So okay. the mythological, <laughs> very, in, in very English English way. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the tough translation. Yeah. 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 So the minute that you meet the mythological ex, there's something about you that opens up immediately. And no matter what, if you have a husband or whatever, like, okay, there's a warm moment there. Yeah. Um, one of my absolute favorite characters on the show is Tali. Um, played by Moran Rosenblatt. And I feel like I want to see an entire spinoff series on uh, her and how she came to this point in her life. And I was just absolutely fascinated by her. Tell me about, was she just a super fun character to write? Because I'm guessing that the writers loved writing for her as well. We did. We loved writing for a kick-ass pregnant woman. Um, <laughs> you know, that, that, you know, I don't know if we've seen it so many times, but we thought, you know, the fact that this woman has gone ahead, gotten pregnant, there's no man in her life. And she's also, uh, you know, a police detective. And 
we sort of had this her backstory that she had wanted to get into the unit that Segev's care, you know, that Segev had been in in the um, Israeli army, but had not been allowed because of her gender. And so I decided to become a cop instead. And so, but then we found this actress who the guys actually knew because she'd been in Fauda, who uh, so embodied the character that we all imagined and even elevated her. Yeah, yeah. She's uh, she's really incredible. There are, um, as with with her and with Segev and, and all the characters, there are a lot of so many twists and secrets and betrayals and loyalties. I'm curious when you set out and the from the the initial point when you came up with the story and the characters to the point where you wrapped. Were you changing things as far as, okay, this person is going to, you know, be there for Segev or screw over Segev or, I mean, how much did that stuff shift or was it always there from day one? I think that the basic story was actually there from day one. I mean, just think about it for a second, what we did starting from the three years ago when the ladies came here to Tel Aviv and we wrote the Bible and, of course, the pilot. So basically, again, not all of it, not 100%, of course, but basically the story was the same story. We changed a little bit. For example, you know, Tali's, Tali's character at the beginning, at the early beginning, was a man. Then we changed it to a woman. Then we took her to be his cousin. And slowly, slowly, she developed to be pregnant also. So suddenly we got a fascinating character as Tali. Ron, everything that we planned for happened just like at the beginning. The things that we presented to Netflix, this is what happened in the show. And the same would more or less with Segev. So I think that, you know, if we talk about percents, it's kind of a high percent that was there at the beginning. How was you, I mean, like you said, you guys started this uh, in the before times, pre-pandemic. What where did how did the pandemic impact? I'm guessing you shut down production and then it because the waves of where COVID was changed. I mean, it was like a much more, you know, bigger thing going on in Israel at first, and then it was much more in America. So how did you navigate that? Well, I would say that when we started shooting in 2020, we started shooting in Israel in 2020. I think we started in February 2020, and we were all aware that there were 15 cases of COVID at the Ikilov, whatever, Ikilov, whatever the the hospital in Tel Aviv is. And we actually shot in that hospital, and we're all like, well, we just hope those COVID cases are somewhere else, not close to where we were shooting. Um, And we, you know, we weren't really worried about it. But as, you know, the wave started to happen, Netflix started getting nervous and said to us, we'd like you to come up with a contingency plan and um, try to compress the work. So we started throwing out scenes and we were going to do tandem units. And the story I always like to tell is that at, I think it was March 11th, at 7 a.m. We had our Netflix call in, in Tel Aviv and they said, OK, go ahead with the plan. We're going to do tandem units. Go for it. And then 7 p.m. that night, they said, we're pulling the plug. We need to get all of you out of all the foreign nationals out of there in the next 48 hours because the country is being shut down. And so, you know, we just shut, had to shut down on a dime and got back March 15th when California, you know, the, the state shut down. And then we just kept, kept trying to get back there and didn't get back there till this past January. Wow. Yeah, we had a break of eight months, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I- Lior, how is that for you when you're like, here, you've spent this time sort of developing this character of Segev and, and starting, and then all of a sudden it's like, okay, put him aside for eight months, and then you have to re kind of find yeah. this character and get into it all over again. So just imagine I was for eight months in New York and in Israel in, inside this character with all my tattoos and, you know, in the law, in, in this journey of loss and a journey of fighting to being in fighting mode, it wasn't easy. It was like the hardest thing. And then all of a sudden, like, stop, go home, be with your family, be with your kids and don't do anything. So I decided to quit smoking. I decided to start baking. 
<laughs> and so I gained like eight kilos in this eight months. You also <laughs> had a baby. You also had another and, baby. Yeah, and I also had a new baby born. <laughs> yeah. And then like after like after six months, Netflix called and said, in two months we are coming back. So I, have to lo- I had to lose eight kilos in, eight mu- in two months in order to, uh, to get back to be Segev again. Which it is was, more than it 16 was like pounds. a roller coaster. What? Which is more than 16 pounds. It's like yeah. yeah, I, plus pounds. I was going to say, which one of you, uh, Avi, Nicole, or Don, was tasked with making sure that Lior lost the eight kilo? <laughs> Lior was. <laughs> I, I, was <laughs> I was happy to, to take my shirt off. So and that, that was the sign. Yeah, you, you did a good job. Yeah. I have to say, yes. <laughs> What was the most of, of uh, I mean, there's so many, um, there are intimates and then and, and personal and, and emotional scenes in the show. And then there are these other, like, I feel like big action moments. Was there a scene that was the most challenging for you all as, as, as producers to, to set up and figure out? And, and then, Lior, I'm curious, as an actor, was there a scene that was the most challenging for you? I can say for writers, for all four of us, I'm sure these guys will agree too. The most challenging <laughs> scene was the the big, you know, the the big final uh, um, scene, the big conflict in the in the last episode, uh, coming together because that's where everything ultimately had to be resolved. And um, we went through so many different versions of how that would be resolved, and it was uh, it was incredibly difficult. But filming. Was- Filming, though, it would have to be the hit and run. That was yeah. challenging because yeah. the first time we tried to shoot it when we were in Israel, the first time in 2020, it was raining and um, it, it became too, too um, difficult and too dangerous to you know, make the stunt work. So we had to stop. That's why we knew we'd always be able to get back to Israel because we had not filmed the hit and run yet. Yeah, so it's an important have- scene. It was yeah. an important scene. <laughs> we can't yeah. just talk about it. This thing happens off screen. <laughs> yeah. but what about as an me, actor, think, Lior? What was your... Think, yeah, the funeral of, 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 of Daniel, I think for me it was the hardest because it was uh, this monologue of a broken man that have to, to be near his daughter and his parents and all his family and to try to to hold on because he's like a strong man who never breaks and uh, not in front of all those people. And this is the, this is where he breaks and it was very hard. And I think the other one, it's all about the, the action. It was easy. It was, wasn't easy. You know, I broke my, my rib uh, one time in the club fight. I was, I was, I, I torn my muscles between the cars, but I think for me, the, the hardest thing was those emotional scenes not the action. And, uh, and I re- also, the, I think there was a very beautiful one shot of me discovering Danielle at the end, at the beginning when she's dying and she's lying on the, on the bed in the, in the hospital. So it was all, it was like, I don't know, like a minute that the camera is just on me and I'm not talking. So for me, I thought, I thought it was a challenging scene to, to play. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's really interesting. I was I was curious if you were going to say on the stunt side from there's a, the a scene in the bathroom that's that's just um, very you know it's just like a beautifully choreographed fight scene. And when you said you broke a rib, and I was trying to figure out like was what which muscle or I don't know internal organ got injured during that that fight scene? Yeah, yeah. In in that fight scene, it was the liver. The liver, okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because of the drinking you did afterward. Yeah, no, because the punch that you gave me in my liver. Okay. But yeah. yeah. I was curious how you, yeah. I mean, and I'm so scene on the bridge. Yeah. Sorry, oh, yeah. go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say the scene on the bridge. The scene on the bridge was the coldest scene in the entire world. And I'm going to die. Right. And Lior had broken ribs and he had to run. It was, that was hard. That was a hard scene. And that, yeah. that's that is uh that that is that is commitment i was curious about in the here you know the there are two different countries the show is about these two countries you know the the 
<clears throat> the way they they can be allies and the way that they can be adversaries. Were there conversations between the four of you about, mm, I don't want America to be portrayed in this way, or oh, I don't think that Israel should be portrayed this way? And oh. and how did that those go? All the time, all the yeah. time. I think that, you know, at some, time, at some point, the ladies really wanted to kill us both because <laughs> of trying to push this really strongly against, you know, putting one side as the, the good and the other side as the evil. What we were trying to, to say, hey, in this situation, there's one guy who's, you know, fighting his way in between two evil entities, let's say, let's put it that way. But our mission was to make it more explainable or ma- making it more understood for the audience to understand why did Israel do this and why did the U.S. do that. And I think that if you watch the whole show, you understand it all. I think that you, if you were the head of, let's say, the Mossad, you would have done the same. If you were the head of the CIA, you would have done the same. And the same, of course, with Segev, that he's just trying to get an answer. He's just trying to get an answer a very simple answer, you know, okay, he knows who killed them, who killed her. He knows that it's those two drivers, but he's trying to understand why and more than anything else, did she really love him? Yeah, and, and of course, once once he gets, you know, any kind of answer about why, it just, it, it broadens the scope of the show so much and it just becomes you know there's so many other factors which of course brings me to season two what is the status because it ends on on quite a cliffhanger and you could see a path forward to a second season yes we you could and we are hoping that Netflix will, you know, um, actually pick it up for a second season. That, that hasn't happened yet. That's the show just dropped like maybe two and a half weeks ago. And I guess they wait a little bit until they make those decisions. But we definitely have a lot of ideas. And, um, you know, we're hoping we just get to <laughs> employ some of them. Yeah, I was, I was curious. Have yeah. you all, I mean, just in case, um, and, and hopefully it will, did, have you all, the four of you, been having conversations about here's where we could theoretically take Segev and take this world in a second season? Yeah, we do, definitely. But we can tell you. We, 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 we can tell you everything about it, but then Avi will come and kill you. So let's. I know. Don't do that. Scared of no, but, but like, listen, uh, I think that definitely what we want to deal with is with uh, a new character of a, of a woman, a New Yorker, that she's a radio host and she's doing lots of TV critic. <laughs> yeah. And that was in our mind when we came to think about a second season. I understand. I don't blame you. I think she's already fascinating. Yeah, <laughs> she's, We're starting her running on the bridge. Yeah. Very cold. Cool. <laughs> right, exactly. With that, yeah, he's chasing her. Yeah. <laughs> um, what's been the reaction since this show came out? I know what the reaction's been in America, and there are people that are like obsessing about it. And I've read so much on Twitter and online. But um, for Lior and Avi, what's it been like in Israel? It's huge. It's huge here as Fauda was, and then everyone you know watching it. It's number one on Netflix here. For a long time since it went out, uh, yeah. But it's it, you know it's it's uh, and Israelis as Israelis they telling you everything they saying everything and uh, for good and for bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, the, the show is very successful here in Israel. Yeah. I, what's the thing that they're saying, Avi? Since there, since no one's holding back there, what do people <laughs> love and what do people ha- not love there that they're coming up to you and telling you? Oh, it's pretty simple. Oh, but this is not Fauda. We want Fauda. Like, <laughs> like that. So, okay, guys, <laughs> Fauda. Well, this is not an Israeli show. Okay, guys, this is an American show. Yeah, so <laughs> it, it took some time for some of the critics, some, of course, most of the people that I know love the show and crazy about the show. But, you know, some people expected to have a fourth season of Fauda, which is coming, you know, in a few months. But they expected the fourth season of Fauda and it didn't happen for them. Other than that, I must say that, you know, again, just like in Fauda, we know that it's very popular in the Arab world. It's very popular in the Middle East in general. 
uh, in India, but also in Jordan and Lebanon and Bahrain and United Emirates and Egypt. And there was a whole article in one of the Egyptian newspapers that really shocked me. I, I read Arabic. And one day I read that in the Stur newspaper, they published a whole article about how Lior Raz changed the Israeli character in Arab eyes. Through the perspective. Hit and run, the, the perspective. perspective. Yeah. Of the, the Arabs towards the Israelis through the Oras character in Fauda and Hit and Run. And it was shocking. Like the, 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 the journalist, the woman journalist that was writing it described Leo in such a nice way. Um, and it really made us think, you know, hey, maybe we managed to create some kind of a change. Maybe just to eye open some of the people's minds. So it was really nice to understand that. Great. So are you guys back to think about Oh, I was just going to say the incredible thing about Netflix and, and all these services that are so global. I mean, this opened to almost uh, opened in almost 200 countries, right? So it's, it's so global that what it ends up doing is making our world so much smaller and everybody becomes much more human and relatable. And that's got to be a good thing. Yeah, a uh, 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 perfect uh, note to end on. Um, Hit and Run is is streaming now on Netflix, um, and I do hope you get a season two because um, it sounds like your protagonist is absolutely uh, incredible. I yeah. want to thank Avi and Lior and Don and Nicole um, and everyone at ninety two I for joining us and have a great rest of your day. Thank you. You thank too. You so thank, you. Thank, you thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yeah.